punctuated equilibrium theory uh, comes out of um, the study of evolution and biology, and Brian Jones and I used it, uh, other people have used it, but we developed a, a book where we used it as the guiding framework or the guiding theory for our explanation of policy change, and that was a book that we published in 1993. And we were interested in analyzing uh, over long periods of time, so for example, maybe 40 or 50 years of policy change, why were certain policies for generations of, at a time stable? And uh, people thought that maybe they were immovable. For example, smoking and tobacco policy in the United States, the tobacco industry was often seen as the single most influential lobby in America, and it would never be taken down because it had so many connections to farmers and the tax receipts that the government got and it was a huge export commodity for the U.S., and so people thought that that was an example, like they think of the National Rifle Association now as the most influential interest group in American politics. But all of a sudden, finally, things flipped on the tobacco industry, and the, the, the prevailing understanding of tobacco went from being glamorous to being catastrophic. And so today, throughout the world, at least the Western world, we see policies that are much more anti-tobacco and that was once upon a time that was unimaginable. And so our book was published in 93, and um, that's what it really focused on. How could we explain the unexpected shifts in the political fortunes of major American industries? Well, um, students should use many theories, um, but I think our theory is of interest because um, it poses as a question something that other people sometimes take for granted, which is why are certain industries powerful? And what is the basis of their power? And we propose that there's really two bases of power. One is an institutional structure, so supporting government agencies that promote a certain industry. And with uh, smoking, you could think of that as uh, once upon a time, it was the Department of Agriculture in the United States, or with nuclear power in the 1950s and 60s, it was very powerfully supported by its regulatory agency. Uh, there's any number of these uh, industries, but the other side of the equation and the other part of the supporting system is a very powerful supporting idea, what we called in our first book, the policy image but which people often refer to as the frame or the issue definition. And when that policy image is uh, associated with things like patriotism or economic growth or entrepreneurialism, um, the American way of life, um, glamour, like cigarettes, uh, then that combination of a very powerful supporting image in an institutional structure that prohibits or inhibits the participation of critics, then that can be a very powerful thing. On the other hand, those things can crumble almost as quickly as they were created. Because once the policy image begins to change and people start to take a critical view of something that they used to look at very favorably, then the political calculus changes, and people who were not previously involved in the issue demand a seat at the table. And that's what we saw in the cases of, well, in the cases that we studied. We saw that they were able to be attacked successfully, even though 10 years previously they were considered to be extremely powerful.